Let's talk Tanya for the 18th of Tammuz of a leap year. Yesterday, we finished talking about the whole process that follows Teshuva. It used to be fasting. Today, it's giving charity. Today, we are going to take a step back and we're going to ask, what about Teshuva itself? So earlier on, in the beginning of the Geras Teshuva, the beginning of this uh, section of Tanya, the Alter Rebbe explains that Teshuva is Sheyig Mer that a person should firmly resolve in their heart that they are not going to disobey God ever again. Now, it's always, easy, it's always easy to say, okay, I will do this, I won't do that, at least at this moment, but to arrive at that resolve firmly in the heart, how do I get there? What are the understandings and the realizations and appreciations that I need to have in order to be able to get to that place? That's really what we're going to be talking about over the following chapters, and essentially what we're going to be doing is, we are going to be talking about what is a sin? What impact does a sin have? A person who truly and fully understands this and thinks about it, that itself will be enough to get that person to resolve never to do that kind of damage again. Before we get there, however, the Alter Rebbe asks several questions. Two of the questions which, which, which um, the Alter Rebbe asks in today's Tanya are, number one, if we look in the Kabbalah, it talks about that there are two different levels of tshuva. There's tshuva ilah, the higher level of tshuva, there's tshuva tata, which is the lower level of tshuva. What is the meaning of a higher tshuva, a lower tshuva? And in, here in this uh, part of Tanya, in the coming chapters, we're going to be explaining what both of these are. And another question Dr. Rebbe asks is, we know there's a co concept in the Torah called kares. Kares means when a person's soul is cut off from God due to certain sins. For example, a person um, who eats chametz on Pesach, or a person who doesn't fast on Yom Kippur, that person is guilty of a sin of karis. The soul gets cut off, and such a person is supposed to physically pass away before the age of 50. There's another kind of heavenly imposed death, which is called misa bidei shamayim, death at the hands of heaven. Um, an example of that is uh, a non-kohen who eats truma. And for that, the punishment is that that person dies before the age of 60 years old. And the obvious question is, we all know people who are guilty of these sins, who eat chametz on Pesach, who don't fast on Yom Kippur, and they live long and prosperous and pleasant lives. What's, what's up with that? What's that all about? So the answer to these questions is going to come up in the future chapters of Tanya, but first, tomorrow, we are going to start our explanation and our understanding of what exactly happens when a person does a sin.